Dean Thomas is on Fitz Nation. I'm so excited. Are you? I'm so happy. You know, you were like, I've been trying to get on your show a lot. Well, I have been. Why, man? Is my show sought after? To me, it is. Nice. No, no, so nice. let me tell you, like, I don't know how you view yourself, but like, I look at you as like, you know, big time. No way. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, yeah, well, how come I don't get, how come I've never been on that show? I look at you as big time. No, see, I don't. Because you're about to go with Dana White and do another looking for a fight episode. Yeah, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of that dude that hangs out, right? <laughs> You know, like I had, I'm, Me too. I'm, yeah, I, I show up and I hang out with them guys. Dana shows up with his entourage and, yeah. and then joins us for a couple of minutes and we film and have a good time. Then he leaves with his entourage and then we're back off in the Cinderella life. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right, like, yeah. That's right. So, I just hang out with him. Yeah. But in terms of like our profession, like you up there. So, I'm like, you all want to get on that show. And like, you never asked me. And then when you asked me, I was like, yes. Well, I hope this is the first of several times that you're on my show. I hope that? so, too. I hope that. Because what I want to do is I want to target talking about sobriety with you. Okay. If that's cool. Uh, absolutely. Because I've seen, you know, um, sobriety is one of those things where it's not like plastered on everyone's forehead. And then when you find out somebody doesn't drink, it's the weird thing, right? Because mm -hmm. like 90% of people of age tend to drink alcohol. Um, and then I saw like a tweet from you one time or whatever. And you're like, I don't drink, but I'll come hang out. Something like that. You yeah. know? And I was just like, oh, Dean doesn't drink. And then I just asked you and you said, how long? Three years. Yeah. You know what? Like when you hear somebody else's sobriety, it's almost like a fraternity, like a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Now you almost feel like you can trust them because you know how much discipline it takes to yeah. not drink. So like there's a connection that you have with other people right. that are also sober. So like when I'm, when I hear somebody sober, I'm always like, I gravitate towards that person. And I'm, I feel like a connection. I go, and I'm always thinking like, yo, if you ever need something, because I know it, if it ever gets hard, mm -hmm. you know, you let me know. For you, was it drugs and alcohol, or is it just alcohol? No, it was just alcohol. Yeah, and I and mean, th it wasn't... three years puts us back to the pandemic, though. That's right. 2020, right? So, can you tell the story of like how it all unfolded for you? Well, you know, it was a time. It was, this was before the pandemic, really, um, just before, like a few months before. It. And I just remembered just drinking every day. And I never thought I had a problem. And I, I, I don't know if I had a problem. I guess whatever, that's what everybody says, right? I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just remember drinking every day and for no reason. And then I started thinking to myself, like, why am I doing this? Like, what is going on with me? And, and then I realized that nothing good comes from it. Like, nothing good has ever come from me being drunk. Mm -hmm. Only bad stuff. What, when did you notice, what made you notice, like, wait a second, I do this every day. This isn't normal. Or yeah, this I was, I was know. like, I was in a bar. I was in a bar by myself drinking. What time of day? It was in the, in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm by myself in a bar drinking in the afternoon. And this was like a span of like two weeks. And I had been doing this every day for like two weeks. Going to the bar. Going to the bar. By yourself in Go, the afternoon. By myself in the afternoon. Yeah. Just like, yeah, let me just get a little drink. Yeah. Get a little drink. Get a little drink. And then I, then I started to question, like, why am I drinking in the first place? And it all started from, you know how when you're young and you want to talk to a girl and you go, I just need to get a little alcohol in me. Mm -hmm. And that's how it starts. And just then, soften it up yeah, a little let me bit. Soft, yeah, let me, let me get a little loose. And then I remember, you know, before I would go on stage to do something, I go, let me get a little something in me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Get, get, it, get the juices flowing. And then I realized it became a crutch. Like then it like whenever I needed to do something to be personable and likable, I felt like I needed to drink. Yeah. And I don't ever want to have that crutch. I don't ever want to feel that. Yeah. So, I said, so get out of here. you know, I'm I'm sober as well, and it was almost like accidental. Like it was never my goal. I, I was never like, I need to stop drinking. Something bad happened. But pan twenty twenty. Um, I had started tracking like how much I drank in 2018 and 2019, mm -hmm. like keeping track, like how many beers do I have in a year? And I was just like, whoa, that's more than I thought. You know, you're at like 300 yeah. something, you know, whatever. I'm just like, oh, so that's like average <laughs> one how a day. How did you track you know? that? Would you have like a, a I had like a little <laughs> thing on my phone <laughs> yeah. and every time, I, boom, tallied it. So oh, it's like, did you, really? you know? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, 2018, I tracked all the beers I drank. Then I was just like, I need to drink less beer. So 2019, I, I started drinking more whiskey. And I'm just like, well, that's not the answer. So, yeah. <laughs> so did you stop drinking beer and move the whiskey because of the calories? I was like, that's a benefit. I was like, I'll have one old fashioned, but I'll have three beers. Right. I did that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was, just, and then, so my wife, 
who wasn't even like, you need to stop drinking, but she was just like, what if you just didn't drink for a month? Don't drink for January. You know, sober January yeah, is like a yeah. thing, right? I was like, okay, I could do that. I was like, I only have one work trip because sometimes on the work, on the road, like airports and you're just waiting at lounges or whatever, that's when I would have more, mm-hmm. not like in a negative way for my job, but just like, you know, Thursday night, a couple nights before the show, you go out and you have a couple drinks at dinner or whatever. Um, and so January 2020, I went sober and I was just like, this is pretty cool. I could keep doing this, you know, for you, like how, how long did it take, like, when you stopped making it a part of your life and you're just like, oh, this works. Um, well, it, the transition for me was how do I go from needing that crutch to be personable and likable to just doing that on my own? Mm-hmm. And I figured it out. And like it was kind of a weird transition period in my life. And it was actually during the pandemic. So it was easy to like not go out and drink. Right, so, right. Right? So, yeah. so it was easy for me to. I, I go. Thank God I yeah. stopped for that. So for that January of 2020, because otherwise I would yeah. have been bored and at home. Exactly. And all yeah. That. Yeah. So I was. So I spent a lot of time with myself and I did a lot of self reflection, and so I realized that I'm enough. Like just me being me is enough, and I know I got the goods whether I'm drinking or I'm not. So. I just had to have the confidence to be able to go out and just say, I'm enough. Yeah. And I don't need, I don't need a crutch. And then you get to a certain point where it's very refreshing. You feel almost free. Yes. You feel free. Yes. I feel like totally free. Yeah. Like I don't need nothing. I'm just, let's go. Yeah. When I, when I want to make a change in something, I'll try to institute the change and I'll read a book about it at the same time. So in that January, 2020, I read two books about like why stopping drinking is good or, like, you know, people that went sober and wrote about it, mm-hmm. right? And then it's like, I'm noticing the changes myself, and I'm reading about the other possible benefits. And I'm just like, yeah, that's it. That is a benefit. When I go I mean, on vacation now, I don't have to say it's going to be really fun after I have three or four margaritas. It'll just be fun from the start. Right, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That's so, the freedom yeah, And that that's get, the freedom. Right? And to do what you're doing, to be able to read about that and follow other people's journey, mm-hmm. that has to be incredibly refreshing and empowering and to reinforce the, the same ideas that you're having, like, because you're going through it and you're reading the other people going through it, and you're like, man, this really does work. This you is know, amazing. Yeah, you notice more benefits because yeah. they write a kind of a whole thing about it, and, and then you just start picking off. So for you, so you start feeling free, but you also have to get to know yourself again. Yeah, you have to, for What sure. was that like for you? And that's the part that I, I really enjoyed, actually, because, like you say, you have to get to know yourself because you're obviously, you are who you are when you're you're drunk, too. But that's kind of who you really are, so you have to be able to tap into that. Mm-hmm. And, and then you realize, okay, first I, my realization was that I'm enough, and then my next realization was that I'm actually pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm could pretty be... fun to be around. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I see why I'm pretty fun to be around. Like, there's value to me, you know, yeah. without being, you know, there's just value to me. And I can control it. I don't need to have a drink to get up. I can control it just me being me. Yeah. Did you... um feel like you weren't yourself at first though because how long did you identify as i'm the life of the party who has a few drinks and then i'm the fun guy um or like how tough was it i don't think it was that tough but like i said i think because it was during the pandemic it made it a little bit easier because i didn't it wasn't I didn't have a lot of options to go out. You're out yeah. all the time with friends yeah, and all right. that. Right. So I didn't have a lot of options to go out. And and to be and to be honest with you, I'm pretty introverted anyway. No way. Yeah. Like I really I know but no one can believe <laughs> no that. Way, dude. No one can believe that, but I really enjoy being by myself. Mm-hmm. I really do. And and that's part of the reason why like I would have to drink to go out to to be able to get this Superman strength. Like get, getting a drink in me was like Superman going into the phone booth. And now that I don't have to do that, I live in my cape mm-hmm. and I feel so much better about it. So you were introverted and so the alcohol helped pull you out yeah. so that you weren't an introvert and then everybody knew you as that guy. Right. And so now you've, over the last three years, come around to being known as that guy like I wouldn't call you an introvert because you don't seem like that, but that's probably because you don't drink now and you're just yeah. I can just I can just be me. More even. Like you said, that freedom. I have the freedom to be me, like whenever I want, however I want, and I don't have to take a substance to get anything. And then, and I tell you what, 
I, this is one thing I definitely don't miss from drinking, and that is the next day. <laughs> and that is like just that alone. That was is the enough biggest. For me. That was one of the yeah. biggest things for me. I just go, I don't have a headache ever now. Yeah, that alone is enough for me because I I've had some nightmares of like the next day of just being like, oh my god, what did I do? And then also too is and I, and I said this earlier, and that's it. Nothing good happens mm-hmm. when you're drunk. And only bad stuff happens. And I found myself using drinking prior to doing something bad as the reason for me doing something bad. So I would be like, I'm about to do this. So let me get drunk so that I can say I was drunk. Right. And like that's and like and then I realized that's just a scumbag move. And I don't you know, I don't want to do that. I was like, you know what? I need to be I need to be right. Why when you were making the transition to it? Did you say, I need to stop drinking altogether and be sober instead of I need to just really pull back, but once in a while I can have? Because I think a lot of people fight that battle. Yeah, and I think that's a, well, I think for me it was really because I wanted the freedom. I wanted the flexibility. Because you, as a entertainer, personality, mm-hmm. we need to be able to get on like that. Mm-hmm. I can't go, give me 10 minutes. I need to get a drink. You know, I need to be able to get on when you say get on. And uh, and I can. Yeah. Right? I don't need, you know, somebody say, going on in five minutes. Let's go. I don't need anything. You know what right. I'm saying? So for me, it was like, if I'm going to stop, I need to just stop totally. It's yeah. not, I can't give myself an excuse to do it. Because if I have one excuse, then it's going to allow me to have two. And two allows me to have three. Next thing you know, I'm right back where I started. So I needed to just stop altogether. It is interesting. Some comedians, or not some, but like there's a good handful of comedians that are sober. And you just go, yeah. man, you, wouldn't, you would think that they they need that right. to get into that mode. But most the ones that are very, very good, it's not like they get drunk and go on stage. But a lot of us are like, I could get on stage if I had a few drinks. Yeah. I'd get up there on an open mic night, and I'd probably be pretty good. Well, you know, it's funny is that I've always done that. Like, whenever I've been on stage, I've always had some drinks before I went on stage. And the very first time I remember I went on stage, it was on Looking For a Fight with Dana, and we performed at the Laugh Factory. And I remember being in the back just <laughs> pounding them to get up help. there, yeah. pounding them to get up there. But then the very last time I went up on stage, I did the show. It was on Fight Pass um, with Adam Hunter. Yeah. And that was the only time I've never drank to go on stage. How did I feel? I went feel? on stage and I felt amazing. It was amazing to get up on stage to just go up there sober and perform. I mean, it was extreme. It was empowering as well, too, because it made me feel like I could do anything. Because I didn't need to drink. I was just like put my clothes on let's go yeah yeah it's i mean great feeling so like that feeling will start spreading into a lot of other aspects of your life as you go sober because when you think about it scientifically and this is what i got from reading some of those books is just like alcohol is a depressant you feel less feelings right your body is like almost numb to certain things so when you do special things and you don't surround it with hey i'm going to get drunk to celebrate my graduation i'm going to get drunk because i just got married or bat whatever then you're like you can feel all of the good things way more intensely yeah and, and so if you're sure, going to perform yeah. on stage how much of a rush and adrenaline and like uh you know you get some dopamine and some serotonin all those good brain chemicals you can feel them more and just the awareness too uh-huh. Like the awareness, like I was aware of everything that was going on. Like I could look out into the audience and see Al Jermaine Sterling out there. I could look out and see Bilal Muhammad out there. I could see that like, and I could remember it. And it wasn't like prior where it was like a blur to me. Where yeah. It was just like, I did this thing and now I got to watch back. To see. I don't even remember it. Yeah, so I, can, I, can, I was so aware and in the moment and mindful of what was going on. And to me, that's a beautiful thing. How long How long did it take you to fully be like, this is me. I don't drink now, and this is me, and I'm totally comfortable with it. Because for me, I so for so long identified as like, I'm that guy from Boston. I love sports. I love being the guy at the sports bar that's going to drink beer and watch the football games and all that. And so when I stopped doing the drinking part of it, I was just like, I'm not even me, like, yeah, that's your I, identity, huh? Yeah. Like I had to like I had to come totally around and be like, am I okay with this person? Because this is totally not who I 
grown up to be and always pictured myself as. Did that well, take a long time? For no, you? It, didn't, it didn't take a long time. And I think that it was, you know, by not drinking, it was very helpful too because I was obviously, I was going through these, like this transition, like I said before, and I was doing a lot of different things and a lot of self-reflecting. And I think that just came with age. I, maybe I was going through like a midlife crisis mm -hmm. and I'm just like, man, what am I doing with myself? And I started bike riding and I started doing like all these other different things. And I changed a lot. Like I started doing more creative projects in terms of art and it just, everything changed a lot. So it wasn't just not drinking and then realizing that I didn't need that. It was like, it was a total transformation. It was a life change. Yeah, it was a life change for me. Like an internal life change for me to, to be who I am now as opposed to who I was like three years ago. Like I, you know, I quit my job. Like I was a head co one of the head coaches for American top team. Right. And, during the pandemic, when everybody was tripping about work, I was like, I quit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I, I knew I needed to change, and I changed a lot. I changed a lot. Wholesale of changes. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Why did you quit American Top Team? The vibe, you know, like I was being, you know, a lot of people don't get it because they're, when you watch fights from the outside in, all you watch is what happens or what they show you. But on the inside, you know, it's just, it's a hard living. You know, everybody in there is always stressed out and everybody's always, you know, they're all fighting for the same things. Most people don't are broke. You know, I mean, and this is I'm not talking exclusive UFC because most fighters don't fight in the UFC. I was say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, most fighters are in these small shows and like being around these guys all the time. It's it's kind of disheartening. And I just I, I didn't want to be around it. Hmm. You pulled way back on your coaching. Yeah. yeah. Do you coach anybody now? Yeah, I still I still work with. uh Jillian Robertson, I still work with Phil Halls. I'm supposed to start, you know, consulting with uh, Sean Brady. Okay. And a couple a couple people I work with or consult with. Yeah, you, know. you like that better? Like that Yeah, for sure. Approach. I don't, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a lot of stress. People don't understand how much stress it is to, to take on a coaching role and, a, and another fighter because it, because it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a it's entering into a relationship like a you know like a I don't want to say a love relationship, it's but a it, serious it's serious thing. Yeah, for sure, it's a yeah. relationship, and it's you know it's a lot of different ideas going on, and a lot of you know this and that, and it's hard, and it's just it's not something that I wanted in my life. Again, part of that change, I wanted a stress free life. I wanted to take away some negativity and be easy, and like you said, now I'm feeling more. Mm -hmm. As a fighter, as a coach, dude, these guys are trained to be immune to feelings. You can't show your emotions in a fight. You can't show that you're hurt. I can now because, like, now, you know, I've been through this transformation. Yeah. So I was I got to get out of this environment. You were probably drinking because you were in that environment, too. Probably, that yeah. Oh, for it, right? sure. I think that probably really did have a lot to, a lot to do with it. Like, you know, in the middle of the day, like, oh, man, I go to work today. This dude got a fight coming up. Now I got to help get him ready. And, blah, 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 blah. and you know, he's tripping. He ain't got no money. Yeah. And, and next thing I know, and I'm like, oh, let me just get a little drink. Stop yeah. by the bar, get a little something. Yeah. When you look in the rearview mirror, do you think you had more of a problem than you realized at the time? When I'm looking back, absolutely. Like, just telling you the story now, I'm thinking, like, dang, I probably did. <laughs> like, I'm in the. I've had those too. Yeah, like, those too. I'm at the bar in the, in the afternoon. Like mm -hmm. that's a that's not cool. Yeah, by myself. Yeah, no, I'm not like meeting somebody. I was by myself. Yeah, I had those too. Like when I worked in Boston, I had a stressful job because the bosses that I had and the the schedule that I had and stuff. And I remember on my, one of my days off, they used to always call me to go in on my day off. It was like oh, I could never. I was just constantly on call, you know. And I'm covering sports, so it's just like it's not this stress negative thing. I'm covering the Red Sox and the Celtics, mm -hmm. right? And the and the Boston teams. But I remember on a day off one time, and I was just like, I'm going to go play nine holes, right? I'm going to go golf. And I was just like, I'm going to drink because and I, if they call me, I'd be like, sorry, I can't make it in today. Because wow. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be on the third hole, and I'm going to be three or four beers in. And I'm just be like, sorry, can't. Could you oh, I see that. And was, I was just like, as long yeah. as it's past 11 a.m. and it's my day off, yeah. they can't ask any questions. That, you know? See, that would, trip, that would freak me out. And like, I didn't think that was a problem at all now i think back on it, i'm just like gosh that's that, 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 like that's like going next level you know that's like making it okay yeah that's like using all these reasons no it's okay because of this right yeah it's like, exactly you know, like you're making excuses yeah, you're trying to justify it with a lot earlier 
a lame <laughs> excuse. But I think that we had a similar journey because, you know, I, I watch your stuff. You know, I, say, I pay attention mm -hmm. and I see that you taught yourself how to play the piano. And yeah, so, yeah. So, like, and those were the type of things that I was doing. Yes. Over the, you know, during this transition. Like, I'm, you know, I taught myself how to make candles. and I, No and way. Yeah, I make candles. I've, I've made customized candles for a lot of people. I do the artwork on it and I make a little candle for everybody. Yeah. So, I, I like, I taught myself how to do all this, like, creative stuff during this process and it's so healing yes and it feels good like i i've always wanted to learn how to play the piano and the fact that you did and you taught yourself i'm like i'm so jealous i I'm started like, in the summer of 2020 did you really yeah. yeah and i love it i love that you did that because i'm so jealous i've always wanted to learn how to play. i'll get some recommendations i'll, I'll let you know we'll, yeah. we'll get you down that path yeah it's so fun it's not as tough as people think there's really? 88 keys and it's this, you know, but once you figure out the equation of like what they mean, mm -hmm. it's really not tough. And then like one of the greatest things that I can do now is like the fact that I can sit down on the piano and just like, and I'm no master, but I can play chord. You know, you could play something that sounds really nice and it's not that. It's tough. not that difficult. Yeah, huh? it's not. I mean, for me anyways, some yeah. people are just like, you know, and I hate when people just go, I'm not musical. I could never. And it's just like, well, if you think that way, you can't. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah I know if you sit is. down and you're like, I want to do this, you will do it. Yeah, you know. I, I definitely want to. I was going to take lessons one time. I had this uh, this this gay guy wanted to give me lessons, mm -hmm. and I was like, "All right, cool, come come." And I had my school at the time. I was like, "Come to my school," and he refused to come to my school and give me lessons. He wanted to come to my house, and I was like, "That's kind of weird." I was like, "Come <laughs> to my school," and he was like, "No." I was like, "Well, then I guess we ain't. We're not going to do this." Nah. And then I just I never pursued it after that. Yeah, apps. Yeah, apps and, <laughs> and online lessons are huge now like for sure I, I don't have you know like every you can do everything online now so exactly. i gotta learn how to play the exactly. piano what would you say is uh like if somebody's watching this and they're like fighting that battle of like i should stop drinking i should drink less i should go sober but it's really tough what's what's the advice that you'd give you know i really think that the advice is that one my first thing is stop you know like if you're having doubts about drinking stop you know like it shouldn't yeah. be a, it shouldn't be a, a debate yeah it a shouldn't be a debate either either you like it or but if you're like i should stop and you know it's bad for you then you should stop like it's not a debate if you like it you know my boy rj he loved to drink i'm never going to tell him to stop i'm like hey man go out have a good time yeah but like if you're debating and you feel like you could be a better person without it i'm telling you right now stop but if you're going to stop you have to develop or increase your network of people around you that are supportive of that. And I think that is the biggest thing. I think that the people around you are always the biggest thing in terms of your decisions that you make and the progress that you can make with the decisions. Yeah. That's so, huge. Yeah. So environment's huge. And a hundred percent, because if you are trying to stop drinking it, but you're still hanging out with the same crew, it's not, it's never going to work. Yeah. Like you have to really change your whole crew, change your outlook. You had to change a lot. Yeah. Not to scare people off, too, because what I would say is, like, maybe you spend less time with your drinking friends or whatever. Go change, right? Make your change. You can come back if you want to keep those friendships. And yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. honestly, those friendships will either be strengthened or you'll find that you weren't actually. I, I saw I heard this phrase one time. It was like when I was younger, I used to think I had good friends. I didn't have good friends. I had drinking buddies. Yeah, because that's all we did together. Right, right, right. And then you grow, and then you like make this change, and it's just like, okay, it turns out we're like, I don't know, we go to the bar at the same time, but we're not actually friends. But your friendships will grow stronger the people that are supportive of it. Yeah, for sure. That's what like if somebody's having a question of whether to drink or not, you need to stop. But then you're gonna have to find people. But like I said, but it's a lot of people out there. A lot of people are sober, have gotten sober, and they'll be willing to help you because yeah. they know how it is. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you have this connection. That's why, like, if... Then call me up. You know what I'm saying? You want to stop drinking? Call uh -huh. me up. I'll be your friend. You yeah. know, because I know, I know how it is. And the other thing, or, like, one of the other things is, like, sober is, like, a negative word to a lot of people. Or mm -hmm. just, like, like if, if, if you tell me, oh, I'm, I'm sober, a lot of people would jump to the conclusion of just, like, you must have been really messed up. Yeah. You must have been face down in an alley. Yeah. Maybe arrested. <laughs> you know all these problems when in actuality like that's why for me it felt weird to say like i don't drink to people or just like i don't drink categorically don't drink i'm sober whatever because i'd be like they're just gonna assume like i had this issue and i was like on a really on a bad path and 
you know, not a good husband, not a good father. When it's just like, no, like, I feel like I was pretty good. I'm better now, but, yeah. you know. Now, I get 100. I, and sometimes I do feel weird about saying, like you said, sober, because in my head I didn't feel like I had that bad of a problem. That's what I mean. Right. And and sometimes when I say it, you're right. Like, I feel like people are, or I may be giving off that vibe that I was in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, my father was a really bad alcoholic, so I know what that looks like. And maybe that's what I'm comparing my journey to his because mine wasn't as bad as his because he was really bad. Yeah. And mine wasn't that bad. So maybe when I say I wasn't that bad, it's a comparison to him. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know, maybe mine was bad enough, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's like there's no right or there's no like, oh, you were a bad one and you weren't. Like it's all it's right. all on a spectrum. Did you go to meetings or anything like that? No, no. I never went, yeah, I never went I. to meetings. Yeah. yeah. I just, I literally, I just stopped cold turkey. Yeah. Just cold turkey and then just. So so when it comes to discipline, because you said earlier to start, like when you're around other people, you know what kind of discipline it takes. But like for you, does it take discipline? Because when people say, oh, you're really disciplined, I just go, I would be disciplined if I really wanted to reach for that beer. And I'm like, no, I don't drink. But I I don't. Right. I'm on right. the other side where I, I don't really care to. It's not. I don't feel like I'm missing out on something because I'm not having uh, an old fashioned yeah, you're right. But, I mean, or or a beer. So to me, it's not discipline. Right. To me, it's discipline when I say, I do not want those tortilla chips because I'm trying to drop <laughs> a few pounds. Because I will always yeah. want to reach for the chips. Or like, I don't feel like running this morning, but I got to get up and That's do it anyway. Discipline. That's discipline, right? You're right. So you're right. I guess it doesn't take discipline not when you for want you. to do but it. But for yeah. other people, it does. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. For you know, me, it's, it's not, not to make not light of it, yeah. too. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, that's interesting. I never really thought of it that way, but you're right about that. It does. It's not discipline for us because so, we don't care. So this episode is going to come out on St. Patrick's Day, right? Ooh. Big drinking holiday. Were you bit like? Was St. Patrick's Day big? Like you were from Delaware, and then you were down in Florida. You know, well, black I mean, guy I from was, Florida is like St. Patrick's I can, Day. A big I couldn't thing. remember one St. Patrick's Day in Delaware. I was a young. I was young right, of course, there. Yeah, so, yeah. but um, but like as an adult in Florida. Right, black guy in St. Patrick's Day, not to make it a race thing. No, <laughs> listen, I'm but black put Irish. Di but di <laughs> like different, you know. I'm a Fitzgerald from Massachusetts, where Boston and green beer and all that stuff, right? So mm -hmm. that was, you know, when I'm kind of becoming this version of myself, I'm just like, gosh, I'm just, I'm not gonna drink. I'm, I'm a Fitzgerald from the Boston area on St. Patrick's Day, and I'm just what gonna a disgrace. Be like, nah. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. But for you, like. uh you're going to be in Boston on St. Patrick's Day with Dana White and yeah. Matt Sarah, and there's certainly going to be some good times going around. What is it like for you to be in that environment now? Well, the one thing I will say is this, is that when you tell people that you're sober and you don't drink, people are pretty respectful of that. It's it's a lot different than drinking, because when you drink and you say, no, nah, I'm not drinking today, you can't get it. They're like, oh, you, you get this on you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, bleep, yeah, yeah. you bleep. You know, right. and and they force you to. But when you say, nah, I'm sober, I don't drink, people are very respectful of that. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. So, but the I think maybe the hardest thing for me was ha learning how to deal with drunk people when you're sober. Mm, that's I haven't hard dealt part. with that much. You haven't? That's well, hard. because I have, a, you know, I have two kids and my wife just kind of, I mean, she doesn't drink anymore at all. She has it wasn't even a thing for her. She's just like, I don't want to drink anymore. I got to breastfeed. And then yeah. like, it, she just kind of fell out of love with it and didn't miss those times. But for the most part, like we don't go out a lot. Like we're just, you know, once in a while we'll go out to dinner, but I'm not around a lot of people that are drinking a lot. You are. Sometimes. And well, you're on the road a lot. Yeah. And I can be on the I'm road I'm not a lot. anymore. All these shows at the Apex. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, some, and sometimes I'm around people that drink a lot. And my tolerance for dealing with it has risen for sure. Mm. Because I remember there was a time, like if I was still drinking and couldn't drink and there were drunk people around, it doesn't work, man. I'm like, oh. You're annoyed. You're, you're annoyed. Not because you want one. You're just right. like. He's like, man, these people. I'm out. But now you learn to be entertained by it. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. and, and I guess, you know, now that we, you know, take our phones out and we can film people doing dumb stuff and now I got blackmail. Yeah, so. <laughs> you just got a whole folder on your phone? Yes. Just storing it up? But, um, but yeah, that's kind of, that was kind of a hard process yeah. to deal with, of dealing with people that are drunk when you're You're good drinking. now, though? Yeah, I'm good now. Like Because St. Patrick's Day weekend in Boston, you're yeah, going to need it, bro. I don't mind it. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing I have to, you know, keep my head on a swivel is, you know, people like tough guys, they want to be extra tough. Right. So I got to make sure that I'm aware. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get, you know, snuck up on. Yeah. When these knuckleheads run up on me, I got something for them. Yeah. You ever feel like uh, you want to hold back from being like condescending? Like, no, nah, I don't drink, you know. 
That was that's another that thing too. for me sometimes. Like when you're making positive changes, I don't want to be the guy who's just like, I'll tell you this right now. Like like I eat plant based diet for the most like ninety eight percent of the time, and then uh, and I and I don't drink. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Because the six years ago version of myself would make fun of me mm-hmm. a bunch. I'd be like, who is this loser? Get out of here. So I'm like very, I'm in my head about that sometimes where I'm just like, I'm that guy. Sorry. I'm See, sorry. I'm that guy. I've never, never thought about that, but you're, you're bringing up these, you know, these thoughts in my head. I'm having these light bulb moments right now of thinking you're right. When sometimes you say, I don't drink, you, you feel a little bougie. Yeah. Like, I don't drink. I'm better than you. Like, yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And that's, that's certainly not the case. Like I said, if you drink and you thoroughly enjoy it and it's, you know, you feel like it, it makes you happy, by all means, yeah. I will buy you a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have, like, most of my friends drink and I buy them drinks sometimes, yeah. you know? So there was a time where I didn't. Like, it took me a while before I was able to do that. But now I'm like, listen, that's your thing. You drink, go ahead and have a good time. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Sometimes you can feel like, oh, I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. Whatever you <laughs> what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. Else. Anything else, Dean? What else? What else, Any man? other Any other pointers on, uh, on going sober to anybody out there? If anybody out there is sober... Keep going with it. Thumbs up. If you're not, enjoy yourself. Yeah, enjoy yourself. That's, that's the, the way yeah, it is. Right. You know, like if be safe, yeah. enjoy yourself. Just be safe. Don't hurt nobody. Don't like make fun of me and yeah. Dean. Yeah, don't. We're just living our lives. I'm just living. My, I'm just trying to do my thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just. Try, I'm just trying to be me. But uh, no, nah, I think you know. I really appreciate this conversation. You've made me think about a lot. You've opened up my mind to a lot of different things I have never thought about. Yeah, and that's why I like having conversations and. We couldn't have this conversation if we were drunk. So <laughs> <laughs> it would sound a lot different. Wouldn't yeah. It? Gosh, I'm trying to think if I had any other things I wanted to clear up, or any other things that I wanted to shed light on it. No, I think I'm good. But here's the fun part, Dean. We're off and running with one episode with Dean Thomas on mm-hmm. Fitz Nation. You let me know if you ever want me on Lover and a Fighter. Of course. Right. Part of, course. of the Fight Pass. Podcast Central fan, Galaxy of Stars. Yes, we're both in the Galaxy of yes, Stars. Yes, we are. So anytime, but but check out Dean and Josh uh, on that show. What other stuff you got coming up? You got your you got I a lot going busy. on. Bro. I got a, a Dean's got answers. I'm going to get Dean's you. Dean's got answers. answers. Where's that? Got answers. That's on. That is on YouTube. Uh, but the UFC, I don't know how it works. UFC just I, I film it right here in this room. Oh, it's with know. you. It's yes. with the UFC. Yes, good. Yeah, so right. it's with the UFC. I have that. And then I, do, you know, I'm always around. I'm working this weekend. Yeah, you know, doing the insight coaches. You're analysts. great at that. Yeah, by the way. and Fantastic and I'm working, and I'm doing the post show too. Exactly. I'll be with you on the post show. Are this, you? This will be out next week. We'll have done the post show in the rearview mirror. But which it's is be weird. Fun, I'm not man. doing the pre-show, but I'm on the post show. Well, the pre-show they taped because of all that's going on this week. Oh, power slap. There's a lot going on. So Bisping and Helly taped the pre-show on like Wednesday. No kidding. I think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm inside baseball. Like. <laughs> yeah. I'm, pulling every pulling the curtain back for everybody but there was a lot of moving parts with production because they're doing john jones pay-per-view power slap and jan dualish really show at virgin hotels in las vegas pay-per-view in london coming up very busy time for the ufc man and i love it man because that means we're working that's right i love it oh my god thank you for allowing us to work. <laughs> and you got Dana White looking for a fight. Dana White looking come for a fight. out soon, yeah. but you'll be taping yeah, it Yeah, we're taping week. that next yeah. week. So if you are in Boston, come check us out. And I'm doing a seminar at Mark Delagrati's spot Hell yeah. in Boston uh, on on that Friday night. Yeah. Man, I'm have, listen, I'm enjoying life, man. I'm living I'm living my dream. I appreciate your honesty, Dean. Thanks for coming. My man. Show. Appreciate it, man. Dean Thomas, everybody. Thanks for watching Fitz Nation on the UFC Fight Pass YouTube channel. You know, my bosses would love it. If you hit that UFC Fight Pass logo and subscribe to the channel, thanks and I'll see you next time.